Hello everyone, Steve Burns here once again and I wanted to share with you the new features in Photoshop CC. In the previous uh, tutorials I shared you know, techniques, cool little techniques uh, that you can apply to 3D for creative purposes but I didn't really address some of my favorite uh, 3D features. Now one of them is um, this incredible ability of, of Photoshop to handle large amounts of memory. In other words, it's become much more robust in handling um, large poly counts. So the Mercury graphics engine has been improved. And um, what I have, what we're looking at here is a Poser 2014. That's the, um, the new Poser um, imported in as an OBJ. And as you know, or, or if you have experience with Poser or most 3D programs, they have a tendency to export out um, their models at a very high polygon count so that um, it renders the best results in Photoshop. Now let me share with you what I'm talking about. I'm going to target the scene here. Right down here under the properties panel we can um, select various types of viewing modes. The viewing mode I'm going to target is the wireframe. Okay so now we can see the model as a wireframe. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer here and we can see the polygon count is very very high. Now these are triangles, they're not quads. Quads are four point uh, polygons. These are tries, are three point polygons. And what we can, you know, what we can see here is a whole lot of uh, of, of poly poly count surfaces all the way down through the knees. It becomes more bunched up, particularly here in the clothes and the wrinkles and the pants and the folds behind the knee. Especially when we come down here closer to uh, the shoes. So there's a lot of polygons um, associated with this, and we can kind of move this all around the subject. And we can see exactly um, how much detail that these large amounts of polygons is actually rendering uh, or allows us to render in this object. So the Mercury graphics engines have become so much more, as I mentioned before, robust in handling um, large amounts of polygons that you import into uh, Photoshop CC. Let's go back and target my scene and go back to my presets and the properties and target the default uh, to take us back. So now let me address another uh, a nice feature, and that is the use of 32-bit lighting, um, or or the 32-bit uh, ability to apply any type of color. And if we target our texture under the OBJ mesh, here's the body under the illumination map, or or any of these will work. I'm gonna target this here. We have the 32-bit color picker panel. So this is basically our HDR style of lighting. So I'm come over here as a really wide range of, of light sources here that can be applied to 3D model. Now this has always been default in most 3D programs. However, this is something more fairly new in, in Photoshop. And I know that it's fairly new in the illumination aspects of, of Photoshop, although we have had this ability in the lighting. So we can check what we do is we're applying it to the actual surface, not the lighting. It looks like it's lighting it, lighting it up. It's not. It's actually coloring the body surface. So we targeted the surface texture for the body and we're altering the texture itself. So this is not the lighting. Okay, if I don't want any color, I'm going to go ahead and target black way down here, which gives turns the color off completely. And in essence, it gives it uh, you know, no intensity or no, no higher values or, or luminosity. So I'm going to go ahead and, and click cancel. I don't want to apply anything at this point. So another very nice feature in Photoshop CC is the default use of the image based lighting. To view that let's go up here and target the environment options and automatically we can see the light sources being illuminated behind the object. Right here and you can see in the sternum of the character or in the center of the screen to be exact we can rotate this around you can see that this is a circular lighting source with an image applied to it. Now um, applying um, image-based lighting for a scene is not a new feature but what is new is that it's applied by default so if I come right down here and turn it off 
I'm going to uncheck the image based light source. You can see there's an illumination difference. Let's turn it back on again and we can see the skin is lighting up all around the model. And don't forget we can also change this lighting anytime we want to. I'm going to go ahead and target the um, edit the texture and we can apply a, an adjustment layer if we want to. Now I was playing around with some with some colored lighting earlier but I'm going to go over here. I'm going to, I'm going to dump this here and instead place this inside here maybe an exposure option because again it's using 32-bit lighting and that's why we don't get the brightness and contrast that's why we're not getting the curves because we, we're in a 32-bit lighting environment so I'm gonna target the levels instead or I could have easily targeted um, you know exposure so I'm going to I can adjust this accordingly so if I want this a little darker or a little brighter let's go ahead and apply this in fact, let's go to Windows, Arrange, and let's go ahead and tile this vertically so we can see them, um, the results side by side. And if I hit Command S, I'm uh, to commit my changes. And just keep an eye right over here on the left hand side, and you can see how the light changes. If I come over instead and give this a greater amount of contrast, so I'm going to bring the darks over. As you can see here, we, we're changing the contrast right here on our image. Okay and I'm going to increase it a little bit more there we are bring the whites a little brighter right about I'll keep it right about there command s once again let's keep an eye right over here on the left hand side to see what the results are so don't forget we can come in here and we can alter this lighting alright so if I want to go back to its default uh, state just turn off the adjustment layer let's go ahead and command s and next I'm going to hit a command w because I don't want to work with this anymore Okay, so um, we have uh, nice image-based lighting applied automatically where in a previous version you had to actually come in here and place it in manually and turn it on manually. Let me share with you some of my absolutely favorite features of Photoshop CC. Now in the layers, I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new layer and I'm going to actually alter that to a 3D object. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and give it a spherical 3D shape okay so now there it is we have it applied I'm gonna go, go back to my layers and I'm gonna target both of these okay target Rex and I'm going to target the ball itself let's go ahead and merge this into 3d layers okay so now what we're gonna be dealing with is a single 3d scene with two separate 3d objects in that scene now here are some of the newer aspects of Photoshop CC. Go to the 3D panel and we see them both here. Now the first one is Rex. I'm going to turn it off and on and the other one is the sphere so I'm going to go ahead and rename that one so it's easier to track. Now let's go ahead and pull back a little bit um, so that we can see the entire image a little bit better. I can alter these. I can continue to alter these as if they're in their own separate layers. So if I target the sphere itself and go to its resizing property I can continue to work on these independently including kind to kind of you know transfer them around as well as alter their their shapes I'm gonna keep this one where it is now there's another neat little aspect of Photoshop CC and that is I can add more of these in there now watch what happens if I right click on the sphere itself I have options delete the object or add other objects which which is your standard primitives um, by default or right below your primitives I can add from file and what I'm going to choose this time is duplicate the object so if I hit target duplicate the object now what we're going to get is two of these spheres uh, now there's sphere one then here's the original sphere Let's go ahead and move it over to the right just a little bit so we can see them side by side. Let me hit the B key for my brush. I'm going to bring down the brush in size. Let's go ahead and change my foreground color to something like a blue of some sort. Let's go ahead and target this by painting directly on the surface of my 3D object. Okay, so I am now editing the object is a completely separate object 
and that was because I chose duplicate okay so now instead of duplicate the object let's instance the object it's very simple right click on the sphere and instead of duplicate we're going to go to instance object and um, automatically you're going to see another sphere one there it is pop up and then we're going to test it to see exactly how an instance object reacts to texture editing okay so now that I have an instance of the object I went ahead and targeted the sphere 2 now hit the V key making sure I'm in the move tool I can just grab this right on the tip of the uh, 3D navigational widget moving on the X axis move it on the, on the side here and hit the B key making sure that I have a little bit of a different color than what I used uh, as blue over here and because this is an instance of the 3D object both objects share the same texture so I can target here and start to paint let's go ahead and target the foreground color and give it a different color and paint on the other one as well and as you can see the two are sharing the same texture alright so that's really going to help out quite a bit with your workflow so now you can actually start editing objects and um, in such a way that we can add more of the same objects or duplicates of them or even additional objects so if I right click here on any of the 3D objects I can come in here and say you know let's go ahead and target add a ring and it will bring the ring into the scene so um, a lot of flexibility here there it is the ring is really huge in this case but I think you all get the uh, get the point here so so this is really going to help once again with, with your workflow and that we can import any 3d objects we can create 3d objects natively in Photoshop as well as um, edit them and edit them within a single 3D environment now. So we no, no, no longer have to, to um, rely on using several different 3D layers. We can now start working within one 3D scene or one 3D layer. Okay, so hopefully this uh, has been a little bit helpful in getting a better understanding as to some of the new features in Photoshop uh, uh, you know, CC and the 3D and uh, and how it could apply to your particular workflow in 3d creation so i hope you enjoyed this i'm steve burns and i look forward to seeing you next time